In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take use of the editing functionality of the RAD tree list control. The particular editing that I'm going to show you today is the manual one, and I'll go through the, all the steps in Visual Studio in order to get this set up. Take a look at this demo. We see there we have a regular RAD tree list on our page. If I expand an item, we have the hierarchical structure brought to you of a tree view and the column structure brought to you by a RAD grid. You can go ahead and change any of these entries if I'd like to and update those or if I want to I can also go in and add some items see if this has now been added to my data source let's go ahead and see what this looks like in Visual Studio on my ASPX page I have simply added a rad tree list and I have subscribed to the following events. We have the on need data source, which gets triggered anytime the control needs more data. So initial page load, paging, filtering, expanding, collapsing, anything like that. We've also subscribed to on insert command, on update command, and on delete command, which would help us when dealing with the CRUD operations. Finally, as you have to do with any red tree list, you have to add the parent data key names which is the reports to field of my data set and also the data key names which happens to be the employee ID. All this data comes from the employees table in the Northwind database so I've gone ahead and added columns that correspond to each of the fields that I want to have displayed so employee ID, last name, first name, title of courtesy, notes, and reports to. I've added some additional columns which will help with the CRUD operations. So I have a tree list edit command column which will help me with the insertion. I have a red tree list button column which has the command name of edit which will allow me to edit my entries. And then I also have a red tree list button column with the command name delete which will help me delete my entries. Since this is kind of heavily dependent on what these events will do, let's go ahead and jump into my code behind. What I've done here is I have a data table in session, and the variable that I'm accessing this by is data table. The get data table function actually just returns all the fields from the employees table on my Northwind connection string here. Here we have the need data source event which is triggered again when the control initially loads or any paging or any expanding happens and all I do is simply extract my data table variable as a data table object and apply that to my data source property here now with the insert command this is when we will insert a new row so what I've done here is I get the data table I get the values from the item that I've just inserted and then I assign all the values to the related fields in my row. In order to extract values from the item that we're currently dealing with, we simply define a hash table and pass it to the extract values function of the tree list edible item. The extract values takes any dictionary, the hash table just ends up being easier to work with. And once I've called this method, my hash table is now filled with all the fields that I have inserted data into. One thing that might be a little bit odd is this convert empty values to db null function. If I scroll down, what we do here is that we actually go through my values and see if we can find any values that are either equal to null or where we have the empty string value. This is because when dealing with inserting root items or parent items at the, at the root of the control, Due to the fact that they do not have a child item, there is no value associated with the foreign key aside from an empty string value. And when you then try to save this or bind this to the control, you will actually get an error. So what we've done is that we actually use the db null dot value to any field that happens to be of the empty string type. So if we scroll up to my insert command again, so that we call this before we start working with my table 
and all I do is take these values and insert them into the appropriate field in my row. Once I'm done, I add this row to my table and then save this table back to my session. Same thing with the update command. We get my table from session, extract the values, convert all the empty values to DB null, find the particular row that we need, and then simply remove that row from our data table. So if we run this in our browser, we should have a tree list control that allows us to edit, delete, and insert new items. So let's expand my first item, scroll down a bit, so we can select, for example, Laura Callahan here, and hit delete. If we scroll down, she's no longer in the control. If I scroll up, I can actually edit. any entry that I might want to. And then finally, I can also go ahead and insert a completely new value. And I want him to work for employee ID one. Go ahead and insert. If I find employee ID 1, expand, now see that we have the entry that I defined previously. So in order to recap, let's go into Visual Studio. The important events to subscribe to are the on need data source event, on update command, on insert command, and on delete command, as these provide you with the initial data binding as well as inserting, updating, and deleting your items. And that's what you can get started using the manual editing functionality of the RAD tree list control.